Hello everybody, welcome back. Judicious Fire, and I'm on the iOS server. I'm gonna be attempting some speed records in Here Be Monsters. Uh, I've gotten more and more into uh, trying to achieve a certain time in various game modes, uh, probably over the last couple of weeks. And uh, right now I'm working on um, the latter stages of Here Be Monsters, HBM AI and HBM AJ. And I just wanted to share some of the things I came up with. If you're interested in doing speed records, uh, trying to get good times and things, uh, I'm going to be doing a couple of these kinds of videos. Uh, this is just focusing on Here Be Monsters, but I'll also do um, various stages of insane dungeons and just you know show you the strategy I've come up with. I'm not saying it's the best, but I am saying that it's working currently. Uh, number one in Here Be Monsters, uh, it's not the heroes you use when trying to achieve a speed record. It's not those. The number one factor in trying to beat a certain time in Here Be Monsters is hero placement. So I could use uh, lower tier heroes, but if they're placed in the right direction, they will outperform today's top heroes. So I'm not using uh, Levanica, I'm not using uh, uh, Lazulix, I'm not using Dovekeeper, and doing that for a variety of reasons. Uh, because I have good hero placement, I'm able to use heroes that have even been released, you know, two, three years ago. So hero placement, as far as uh, this game is concerned, you go to any hero base, Click on the hero base and you will see a white ring appear. That white ring is the radius that the hero can uh, move in combat. So when we're being attacked, Walla Walla is able to move as far as the edge of this Y. That's where the white stops. Okay? So we want to try to put Walla, his radius, in a, in a way that it lines up or nearly matches the radius of the next hero. This way we cover the entire board. Now the board is too large for six heroes to cover using this radius method. But I've been able to, with this hero placement, I've been able to cover pretty much the entire board. That is extremely important. Also, you will see that my heroes are at the edge. If I move one square up, it'll turn red. I cannot move Walla Walla further to any edge of the screen. They are absolute edge. That means the moment that the bad guys come onto the screen, my heroes are beating on them. That is very, very important. Uh, so I'm trying to line up these radii uh, as far as board placement is concerned. Now, because it's only six heroes and it's a 40 by 40 square board, I can't cover everything. Look at where uh, this radius stops, right here at the training center. And then this next radius takes place, uh, it ends right before the training center. So there's a, a window that the bad guys can come in. Yes, but uh, I'm trying my best here. Okay, so we move, we cover, we're down to this little eye down here. We get to the eye, press on this. I'm right here at this uh, G and flower, bingo, G and flower over here to the P, and again, it's a mirror image, the board, so you're going to have on that right-hand side a, a window of opportunity for the bad guys. Uh, okay, next thing, I have placed uh, not only every hero at the edge, I have placed two hero totems at the edge. Now, typically, it would be a no-no to place your hero totem uh, right there uh, next to the hero. It's often better to put your hero totem uh, several squares away. Let's pretend that Walla Walla is going to be under attack um, from where this mana vault is. It would be better to have your hero totem up here. That way it activates, buffs Anubis, and by the time he's engaged in combat, he's fully buffed. But I, again, I want this thing to fire off the moment Anubis is directly attacked. I want no wasted time. We're dealing with, in many cases, microseconds. Um... Heroes I'm trying, there are so many combinations. I'm doing this thing last couple of days with auto-proc heroes. Every one of the heroes on the board is an auto-proc hero. He, she, or it does not have to be directly attacked in order to activate its skill. 
each one has an empower insignia. That's going to help with these speed runs. There is very little charge time in the hero skill. Uh, even if the hero is not directly engaged, it's going to be firing off, certainly. But in addition, uh, in those pauses between battle, the energy bar will fill up, often allowing my heroes to proc the moment the next round begins. Now, that's another reason I'm not using somebody like um, Levanica. I'm using only uh, auto proc heroes. This might work. It might not. Okay. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, I am choosing specific auto proc heroes. Every one of these heroes, with the exception of one, is a global attacker. Anywhere there's a hero, a bad guy on the board, these heroes will be attacking the bad guy. Don't have to even be near it. But in addition to that, they don't have to fire a shot that flies across the board. Somebody like a gunslinger, she's got these copters. Now, she's a global attacker. She'll attack anybody out there on the, on the board. But the copters have to move from point A to point B to engage the enemy. Somebody like a Skeletica, well, he's great. Auto proc hero, global attacker, but has to fire a shot, a missile, if you will, that's got to travel all the way across the board to hit the enemy. All of these heroes, with the exception of one, uh, doesn't have to do that. The damage, the skill activation, will happen right on top of the bad guy's heads no matter where they are, with no travel time. So you look at how it goes here at the south. Uh, number one, I got Cosmo in here. And Cosmo's going to bring up this big uh, bubble, crushing bubble. On anybody, anywhere, the bubble doesn't have to travel from Cosmo to the bad guy. It'll just appear. Uh, I've got Cos set up with the Empower insignia. I've got him with a Wicked Armor. I find that it keeps Cosmo alive even better than Sacred Light. I've got Cosmo with a direct attack pet. Little Havoc. Uh, I am not using any kind of healing pets. I'm not using any kind of pet that has to be, uh, that's under the uh, constraints of the hero uh, uh, being under attack. These are all straight up damage dealing pets. I've got Creation. Anywhere on the board, there's going to be a corkscrew of lightning that goes on top of the bad guy's heads. Uh, I've got him with Piblob to give instant accuracy reduction and instant attack. Uh, Wicked Armor, again, what kills him more than uh, direct contact is uh, reflect damage in this game. Uh, I've got him with the Empower to auto proc even when he's not being directly engaged in combat. I've got Serena. Serena, I've got with the Empower, sure. The Wicked Armor to keep her alive, it works wonderfully as an offensive talent. Uh, Serena will give a 100% attack boost to every, excuse me, to one hero every three seconds. I'm trying to do as much damage in a matter of two to three seconds per round as I can. She will help with that tremendously. Now, of my heroes, she's probably the weakest in terms of survivability and also in terms of the damage that she does on her own. So thereby, I have her paired with Chickaboom. Chickaboom's going to cause the bad guys. Where the heck is Chickaboom? It's very helpful in, in numerous modes. Uh, Chickaboom's going to cause the bad guys to take 32% more damage. Because Serena doesn't have a really, really strong attack. Paired with Chickaboo, anybody she's directly fighting, she now has a 32% better chance of, of killing them. Okay, so Chickaboom is a great person to put on your weakest direct contact hero. Uh, I've got Bogeyman. Bogeyman's a killer. He's going to hit everybody, giant strike above the head instantaneously. He'll take guys out one shot. I've got him paired with Punching Box. Now, Punching Box uh, isn't what I would call a direct attack uh, pet. He's not. Punching Box himself is not going to be attacking anybody. But Punching Box is going to be boosting the attack damage of one hero every X seconds. Punching Box will only 
buff heroes that are nearby. Because Bogeyman is alone, he is the only one who's going to be buffed during this. He's going to be killing everybody. Got him with Unholy Pact. He's got a built-in Wicked Armor. That's even more effective than Wicked Armor 9. Only put a damage dealing uh, talent as your primary talent on Bogeyman. Uh, Unholy Pack currently the best one. Uh, and Power for the Auto Proc. What else we got? And we've got Anubis. Anubis with the Wicked Armor to keep him alive. Uh, also do extra damage. Direct Attack Pet. Uh, and Power. Uh, in Totem. I have my classic two in totem. It's what I run 99% of the day. I've got Pumpkin Duke. Pumpkin Duke is one of only four heroes in the game that when placed in totem will buff your entire six-person team. Every other hero that you choose, with the exception of three others, will only buff or will only do damage to heroes that are nearby. Pumpkin Duke does not have that constraint. He will increase the attack, attack rate, and movement speed of all allies globally for 45%. By 45% for 8 seconds. That is game changer. Next in totem, the second hero out of 4 that does provide that global boost. Mike. Mike will give a nearby hero deflect, and that's going to be Serena. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in line two. Will increase the attack and attack speed of six allied heroes. Well, you have a six-person team, so your whole team by 48% for eight seconds globally. The other two uh, that will give you a global boost and that really make a totem effective are Cupid. Increases all heroes energy by 45% and attack by 45%. Okay, the reason I'm not using Cupid and instead Mike and uh, 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 Pumpkin Duke. Okay, look. You get attack and attack speed for 48% for 8 seconds. Jump over here to Cupid. You get a damage boost for 45%. For two, six seconds. So you lose two seconds. You lose 3% uh, in the attack boost. And the energy to me means nothing. Because all my heroes have in power. They're all auto proc. A little, they all have a cooldown of some kind. A little bit of extra uh, damage boost in. Doesn't make a big difference. And we've also... Uh, a little bit of extra energy is going to make a big difference. Also, Athene will do this. Uh, she will increase five... Forget the first line. She will increase five friendly heroes' attack speed by 48% for five seconds. They also gain energy. Well, that's now a reduction by another hero. So in order, I would go Pumpkin Duke, uh, Mike, uh, Cupid, and then Athene. So I do top two. Um, I am putting Pumpkin Duke next to Anubis because Anubis is great. Uh, he can often have a hard time dealing with people with under direct contact. So I give him the extra big boost and allow him to be the trigger. Uh, but he does a global attack and it can hit a hundred her heroes at once. So that big boost is going to allow him to pretty much shred anybody who doesn't have a damage cap. And I put the other one, uh, next to, uh, Serena for the same reason I give her chicka boom. She's attack wise, my weakest hero. Okay. Uh, troops. Through all these speed runs, spawn troops. You'll do better. I refuse to. Until IgG gives us a higher all button, I refuse to spam troops. It takes too long. It ruins my love of it. So all these are without troops. Do it with troops, okay? It'll help you. I'm running AI. Uh, currently in AI, and my main man Drew's at the top of all these Drew loves NR 3.2 seconds. I'm not even listed on AI1, uh, which is probably the fault of the fact that I have auto proc heroes that have in power. They're going to have to juice up their energy supply uh, during AI. I'm not good at the beginning. I'm better at the end when I'm really revved up. Uh, but big, big shout out to Drew who's got a first place finish. 
And I actually, I changed from, eight, uh, from one to two. He's still in first place on uh, uh, AI2. I'm not even listed. I'm in third place. He's in first place again. I'm in third place on AI3. He's in second. TW at top. I'm not listed at all on AI4. And AI5, when I'm juiced up, you know, and I'm running full buff, baby, I was able to come in at 8.8 .8 seconds. Okay. So let's give it a try. We'll run a couple. I've got a bunch of here be monsters. Uh, AI. Okay, let's start. Let's pull back. Boom. Everybody attacks. Oh, the one that is constrained with having to fire something, that hero who is a global attacker but actually has to shoot something, is Walla Walla. Okay, and I've got uh, Walla Walla. Uh, in there because he gives a huge attack boost. Uh, I maybe forgot Walla up in the top. Uh, he's running in power and he's running a wicked armor and he's running a direct attack pet, which is uh, Phoenix. For that, uh, he does have to fire, but again, I'm I'm just trying to boost my team. And uh, Walla Walla is very effective for that. I can also put in Mike. Uh, Mike will, as a hero, Mike will boost my, the attack of my entire team. This is a lot of combinations. It's what makes this fun. All right, let's see if we made any damage on any of the uh, any of the ranks. I won't check it every time. I'll run a couple that are fast. And not a dent. Not a dent. Oh, A3, A, AI3, we got the third. Maybe where was there already? I can't remember. Okay, so we got, we're got we on the ranks for three and five. Uh, so here's that wall if I didn't go, go into him. Gives a nice attack boost. You could put an empower on your Michael and give yourself a big attack boost as well. And I might do that. Uh, maybe take out creation, I don't know. Creation only hits two bad guys at a time. Whereas uh, Bogeyman would hit, uh, I think, five. Noob is 100. Cosmo, everybody who's in the bubble. Now look how high the energy level is of all my heroes during this pause between battle. And boom, we proc on everybody. Big attack boost coming, boom. Take care of everybody. That one was a slow one. Poor uh, Walla Walla's dealing with some folks up at the top. Okay, here comes the uh, Levanica level. There's two Levanicas, I believe, that we have to deal with. Yes. Eight or nine seconds is what we need at this to, to beat it. Uh, we got it in nine, okay. Let's try uh, an AI. Let's run one or two more as with our current setup. We'll make one adjustment. I'll go tight two times speed. And you see we've got good board coverage. The enemies do not have to travel in order to. And that was probably our worst spawn that we could get back in the other corner. Our oh, creation died. Uh, the enemies really don't have to travel in order to get into direct contact with my heroes or to get auto proct on. That was a Mechtessa with a damage cap. She's very hard to take out in less than a couple of seconds. You gotta get her right away. Okay, let's make a change. I have a red warden team. I got three reds, two greens and a white. This is very, this is fine. Okay, so let's take Piblob off of him. And let's put in his place. He's in Totem. Can we get away with putting PD out there? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to stick with Auto Proc Heroes. Put third best in the Totem. Let's put Auto Proc Mike in there. Mike will give. Now we have three damage boosters. Uh... And Mike, uh, I don't know if he's going to do too well in terms of his fighting. So what can else can I put on him? Eh, it's not going to help me. All 
Okay, so Mike's going to be buffing. Serena's going to be buffing. Walla's going to be buffing up here in the north. And we've got three damage dealers. So nice even spread. Let's try again. Let's go AI. Boom. See the instant uh, white wings above everybody's head? That's the buff from Mike. We got three seconds on that one. See how it goes. Uh, got hung up by this Mectessa. Okay, last round, I believe. We have to get nine seconds or less to have a chance to get up on there. Nine. Now, it's those microseconds. It's those tenths of a second that they count eventually. Let's see. Uh, we got two more. Uh, let's see where, if we made it down on anything. Nope. Nope. Third. Still not on that one. First in that one, but by two tenths of a second. Uh, let's see here. Let's run it again. See what happens. Maybe I need another damage dealer in there. Not so many buffers. The guys initially, if your heroes can't initially do the damage to kill the heroes off, buffing them is not going to make a difference. I think I have too many buffers. I'm actually getting a slower time than my, uh, than my last round with uh, creation. Yeah, this, is, this is too many buffers. Lesson learned. One can have too many buffers in the game of Castle Clash. It's 10 seconds now. Ruined myself. Okay, let's just try this. Uh, stick, uh, stick creation back up in there. Oh boy. Let me think. Red, red, red. White, green, green. You know what I'm gonna do? What did Mike have? He had Piblop. I'm gonna put a Thien up in there. Thien has a shot that doesn't have to travel. Global attacker. Auto proc attacker. And like Mike, we'll give a big uh Big boost to the team. Let's take a look at her. Increases seven friendly heroes. That's your whole team. Their attack speed by 65%. They also gain a little bit of energy. Attack speed is very, very helpful in here, especially with somebody like a Levianca, who you got to... Uh, look, at my, look at my quest board, for the love of goodness. Look at what I got to I could do to eliminate a quest board. And I'm a Castle Clash player. I'm a Castle Clash player who happens to make YouTube videos. I'm not a YouTuber who plays Castle Clash. Okay, it's the other way around, man. Uh, I got to raid 15 million, 295 uh, mana. That's ridiculous. It's a, oh, it's a destroying my love of the quest board. I try to get it done till it's, they can't refresh anymore. I try to do, I don't know, what is it, three, four, probably four quest boards a day? But when you're all going out to having a mine, 15 million mana, it's mind numbing. That's not the point of that video. Okay, make sure I got Mike in here. And then let's run these last uh, couple of HBMs. We'll run the last couple of uh, hero trials I got, and then we out. AI, here we go, baby. Oh, don't do this on AJ. Okay, if I were running AJ speed trials, uh, I would 
not be using this team. I wouldn't be using these auto proc heroes. They're just going to get killed. Uh, you need to use Lavanica and Laz and uh, uh, Rosaline. And um, you can use Anubis and uh, Walla. Shoot. She got killed. Serena got killed. Uh, you can use Anubis and Walla, but they got to be tucked away on the inside of your base. Otherwise, they're going to get killed. Yeah, we're, we're ruined now. We've got a completely open side of the board where the bad guys can just come waltzing in. I got to put creation back in there. I was doing better with creation. Four damage dealers and two buffers. That's plenty. Look at this. My whole team's getting wrecked now because we're not putting out enough damage. Not enough base damage. We're buffing low damage. That's ridiculous. Like giving a car wash to a car that doesn't start, okay? It looks good, but it's still sitting in the driveway. Oh, 19 seconds. On. That's brutal. Okay, let's put our buddy uh, creation back in there, and we'll run the last things that we have, and we're done. Where is creation? Here we go. Quick setup. And give him the pit love. All right, real nice. Uh, what we got? Did we get on anything for anywhere? I think we might have gotten on one of these uh, lists during the course of today's battles. That's good. Yeah, I think that third place in AI3 was is new. All right, good. Uh, let's try uh, Hero Trials. They have no speed runs in Hero Trials. This is what we need. You need speed runs. You need a Siren record. Okay, uh, L9 with Siren. Let's try it. See how long it takes. Two seconds. One point something seconds. Uh, let's try uh, Lady Leo. We'll just go left or right. Uh, two and a half seconds. Lady Leo hung in there a lot longer. I thought she would. Four seconds. Oh. Death Knight. Death Knight will come back to life. He's got a built-in revive. This will be a lengthier battle. I'm essentially fighting 60 Death Knights. I believe Death Knight's got a built-in revive. Yeah, I might be wrong, but I think I, I think he does. Uh, Orc Spain. Sure. This will be a quick one. Anubis probably did most of the work here. Uh, how many more of these? You got two of these. Let's take on the two toughest ones. Let's take on Heartbreaker and McDessa. Heartbreaker's a heck of a hero, but you got to really invest resources in her to get the max benefit, to get her to remain alive in today's combat. McTessa's another one. You got to really take her up before she's able to survive any kind of battle that isn't, uh, you know, a lost battlefield. That's that's anything more than a minute. You got to really work on McTessa to keep her alive. Is there more McTessas up there? Oh, yeah, fighting Walla Walla. Sixty-three gems, nice. All right. Well, this is just a little bit of fun on uh, some speed runs. I'm gonna keep doing these videos. Uh, to review number one, it's not the heroes you use; it is the placement. Try to get these white rings as best you can to overlap, or to at least nearly approximate touching one another. That's, I'm really pushing the boundaries, but I almost touch one another. Heroes got to be at the edge. Uh, by keeping them at the edge, you are guaranteeing immediate engagement with the enemy. Um, maybe it would be better for me to have uh, heroes that are a little different. Uh, but I'm having fun with these auto proc heroes. Uh, I'm not saying that's the best thing to do. I, uh, maybe, uh, you know, having a Levanica and a, a Dove Keeper. You know, it could also work against me. I haven't tried that. I immediately started with these uh, with these auto procers. Uh, I hope this uh, helps for those of you who are interested in this game mode. Uh, Here Be Monsters is one of the things that brought me uh, to this game. I've always loved uh, base building. 
uh, tower defense games. I played desktop defender on an old school PC. Ad for Castle Clash came up. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. I'll check you on the next video. Bye-bye.